Hello guys and welcome back to the series. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. And welcome to Croatia and NK Varaždin or Kroyaki Karachi Varaždin at Croatian side. Uh, in a move which is sport sure to spark plenty of heated debate, Dean Tarantai has left Konya Sport to join Varaždin. We'll go over what happened with Konya Sport in a minute when we've got, once we've gone through the Varaždin stuff. Uh, but Talantai arrives with a record of 850 wins, 200 doors and 245 defeats in his career. He's also won 18 league titles and 13 cups. That will face immediate pressure to bring immediate success to the club. Talantai has 70 years, accumulated 34 years of experience now with the likes of Spain and Northern Ireland. Earns himself a reputation for signed players under the age of 21 for long-term development and appears to be a great flip for the club's vision. Still says that I prefer a 4-4-2, uh, but let's uh, let's click forward. Now, one thing I will say, media prediction, as you can see there, is first. They are in the Croatian second tier. They were relegated at the end of last season. But this is the only job in Croatia that was available. There was nobody else insecure, anything like that. I, and I didn't want to sit here for a season clicking forward. So I thought, you know, we'll get our foot in the door. We'll, we'll take this job. We'll take this job. They're predicted to finish first, so it should be a, a relatively comfortable season. Uh, and we're in the door in Croatia. If something becomes available halfway through the season in the first tier, then we'll we'll make a jump up. So, Croatian second tier. Obviously, we'll we'll meet the players in a minute. I am going to do the kits as well, guys. Hopefully, I get them right this time without kit clashes. I'm going to have to sit down and go through them all. Uh, but. Work within the wage, wage budget. The club is already currently over its wage budget, unfortunately. But they want us to gain automatic promotion to the first league, which is, which is fine. We've only got a year contract as well, so not too bad. If we if we do, obviously get another job, but there's not too much compensation for for the other club to pay. Uh, but they want us to get the better of our rivals in Medimure if we happen to play against them, and then obviously required is gain promotion to the first league. So. Let's meet the squad, shall we? Let's have a look at the club first of all. NK Varajdin, 10,800-seater stadium. Year founded 2012, so another relatively new club. They have won the Croatian second league eight times. You can see that they have been something of a yo-yo club over the previous seasons. They did have a spell here in the 40s where they spent a lot of time in the first tier, which is good. Facilities not, don't look too bad. They've got some money in the bank. Like I say, we are over the wage budget, though, so we're going to have to have a look at that as well. In terms of the key player, Tomislav Basic, or Basic, he looks very, very good, doesn't he? He looks really good for a, for a second-tier Croatian player. He looks like a decent player. Enjoys big matches as well. Is consistent. Star player for most first-league sides. <laughs> so I think we've looked in a little bit there. Hopefully we can keep hold of him. Uh, he's transfer listed, apparently. We'll, we'll uh, while we remember, because if I don't do it now, I'll forget. I know I will. Uh, we'll take him off the list, right? Because we're keeping hold of him for as long as we can. So we are predicted to finish first in terms of the squad. Let's have a look. Sort by ability. Milan Matic is considered to be the best player at the club, not Tomislav Basic. Uh, Milan. Wow. No way. No way. This is a. a Second tier player. He's pretty good, isn't he? <laughs> He's pretty good. Okay, okay. I'm I'm shocked by that goalkeeper. Pretty decent. He's Spanish. Uh, you know, mid centre. We could possibly train as a segundo, and maybe an advanced forward. He's got the. He's got some attributes for it there. We've got. Oh man, we've locked in here, haven't we? Locked in here in terms of potential, we've got an 18 year old Blendy Agic. Again, he's fairly decent, possibly one that could go out on loan. Wow, we've we've looked at look at these five star potential players as well in the youth squad. Zlatko Susak again looks reasonable, very good, very good. We've really locked in with this one, haven't we? In I know second tier, so we've not really locked in because we're we're starting much much lower. Uh, than we would have liked. But let's uh, let's go back and have a quick look at Konyaspor. We sort of took our foot off the gas towards the end of the season, really. We, we'd we won the title. Uh, we, unfortunately, if we have a quick look at the schedule for last season, 
knocked out in the Turkish, Turkish Cup. So we yet again we failed to win the cup. Unfortunately, we did get knocked out of the Europa Conference League in the, at the quarterfinal stage to Başakşehir here. Nil-nil at their place, one all at our place, but we did lose on penalties in sudden death, unfortunately. And Bishak Shahir themselves were knocked out in the next round by Partizan, uh, who went on to win the competition. We did also drop points in the league as well. Uh, we actually lost two. We lost to Ankara Gucu and Samsung Spore, but I did play around with the squad. I played some youth players to get them some first-team football, um, and we just weren't really paying much attention to the league <laughs> if we've been if we've been truthful we did absolutely dominate the league we finished 20 points clear of Besiktas uh, with a much much better goal difference scoring 79 goals in 34 games is a pretty good place to be you know and we've upgraded the training facilities twice twice while we've been there so new squad new squad like I say it is lower than I'd like to be but we'll get ourselves into the uh, we'll get ourselves into the first division, no problem at all. We are predicted, as I say, to finish top quite comfortably as well. Varshadin relegated last season. We've got a lot of players in the media dream eleven, which is good. Easily the best squad in the league. In terms of the rules, no more than three non-EU players. Must be at least three under-21 players in the playing 11 for the first half of the game. <laughs> okay. A match squad must have at least 10 players trained by a club in Croatia. So the second tier in Croatia looks pretty strict on homegrown players. Uh, the first tier is not so bad. Only six trained by a club in Croatia and six non-EU players. So there's a bit more leeway in the top tier but guys i'm gonna i'm gonna play around with the kits now obviously i'm gonna try and not get any kit clashes and stuff like that for this this season uh, we'll obviously come back and take on our first game of the season which if we have a look is against orient 1919 in the second league uh no forecast available just yet but we should as the best team in the league comfortably win it so i'm, I'm gonna go do that i'm gonna go through, play through the pre-season Obviously, we'll come back, have a look over any signings that we've made, any ins or outs, have a look at the kits if, if I get them sorted as well. Uh, and we'll come back and we'll take on um, maybe the first two games of the season. Uh, so I'll catch up with you guys in just a minute. Right, guys, welcome back. Uh, for me, it's the next day. <laughs> I've recorded the first part of this episode yesterday in real life. Uh, it's, you know, it was getting on a bit and I've played through the preseason and stuff like that. Uh, it's a dark and dingy day here in the northeast of England today, so apologies if the lighting's a little bit bad. But we've reached the first game of the season, and we are away from home. We're against Orient 1919. Now, in terms of transfers, we said we were going to go through some of them. Uh, there's not been too many, really. I've brought a lot of future prospects in. I've been doing a bit of scouting. Some of these guys have got some really, really good uh, potential, which is which is what I looked for in like the lights of Noah Kanertz, he's gone out on loan, but he has got loads and loads and loads of potential. A young Belgian there. The big one or two who've gone out, though, I've had to move some players on. Obviously, with us being relegated last season, they were unhappy at the club. Uh, and they were kicking up a big, big, big fuss, really. So Milan Matic, who was the, the striker we looked at earlier on in the episode, uh, unfortunately, he's gone. He's gone to Slaven Balupo. He's moved up to the back to the top division. Uh, we did get £275,000 for him and we got his wages off the books as well. If you remember, we were above the wage budget. So we've got ourselves back underneath that. Uh, unfortunate to lose him because I think he could have scored a lot, a lot of goals for us this season. But uh, I'd rather not have an unhappy player out and, and making the rest of the squad unhappy. And that was the same for Tomislav Basic. Uh, again, a good central midfielder, but unfortunately, same story because we were relegated wasn't very happy so he's moved on to Osiek again top flight team 350,000 pound we got his big wages off the books as well which is a good ins wise though I have made one signing to replace uh, Milan Matic if I could remember his name <laughs> if I could remember his name uh, it's he's, he's in the starting lineup. It's Mehic. There we go. Andre Mehic. We've brought him in from HR uh, Dragoviak. More as sort of a cover as striker. I did intend to to start one of the youth prospects at the club in uh, in the starting lineup this season in Mohamed 
Alagic, but unfortunately the league rules in the second tier is players under 17 can't play for whatever reason. So at 16 years old and he's not 17 till September. Uh, so expect to see him in the starting lineup coming up. He's another one with some fantastic potential along with Blendy Agic, who's another one as well. He is on the substitutes bench. He is 18 years old, so he may get some game time as well. But today we're going with Mehic, who is the new signing. Like I say, he didn't cost us anything. He's not on massive amounts of money. I have, like I said, got the wage budget down massively. We're well underneath that now, which is really, really good. So we're looking for some stability here. I did get the kits sorted as well. Uh, I've only done, in the the league that we're in, I've only done ourselves. I've done the rest of the the teams in the top flight. Uh, ours, I think ours looks really, really good. I've also hopefully not got any kit clashes going on this season. So I've done all of the teams barring one in the top flight, which is rude uh, because they're not in the top flight to begin with. Uh, but in terms of the the other teams, we've got Dynamo, they've got their kit there. You know, Hadjuk Split, they've got three. They look really, really good. Garika is another one that's fantastic. They're all really good skin uh, kits, basically. Uh, but I've got them all in. Hopefully there's no kit clashes this time around. I think I've, I've sorted it out. Uh, but anyway, let's get into the first game of the season. Like I say, we are away against Orient. We are the favourites for the title, so we shouldn't have too many issues. Another one who is is wanting to leave is Nicholas Vuk. He's uh, he's wanted by quite a few teams, Slavin Balupo at the minute, but uh, I'm not selling him for anything less than his asking price, really. Uh, but a lot of the players have got relegation release clauses as well, unfortunately. So the lineup that we're going to go for today is going to take me a little while to get used to like it normally does but it's going to be Dominic in goal he's a very very good goalkeeper Spanish formerly of Villarreal and came in on a free transfer he's on big wages as well he's currently unhappy as well because he wants to leave due to the club getting relegated uh, but he's a very good goalkeeper looking forward to seeing what he can do Milanovic as the right fullback today as a wing back on support he's okay needs to improve on his dribbling uh, but he's he's reasonably quick. He's, he's got good stamina as well. So expect to see him up and down the touchline. At 31 year old though, he's not really going to improve much. And he's one of the highest earners at the club. Krenec. Or, yeah, Krenec. Krenec. We'll call him Vinko. We'll call him Vinko. <laughs> Central defender. 26 year old Croatian. Uh, looks very, very good. Quite pleased with him. Diz Daravic, another one who looks reasonably good. Another good central defender, 25-year-old Bosnian. Uh, he's got a great jump in reach and heading. Powerful centre-back, as it says. Uh, good bravery as well. Decent aggression. He's got decent pace. Another good centre-half. Katalanak as the left fullback for today. 26-year-old. Another one who, unfortunately, is unhappy. Wants to leave due to the club being relegated. Hopefully, we can keep hold of them. Uh, and as the season goes on and we, we're near the top of the league, they can, uh, you know, drop their unhappiness. Brazilian in the squad, 21-year-old Brazilian in Ley, or Lee, Ley. So it takes up one of those foreigner slots. Defensive midfielder on the vend, pretty decent for that sort of position. Vrucina is another one. Now, he's naturally a midfielder, but he has got some of the attributes to be a secundo volante on attack. He can't finish, unfortunately, which is, is a downside to him. And his tackling's not great either. So he's possibly one of the weak links in the squad. But 20 years old, still has got room to improve. We are training him to be that Segundo Volante. We'll see how he goes on. Uh, and then on the other side, it's Novo Selec. He is naturally a left back, but he can play as a defensive midfielder as well. Not too bad as a Segundo Volante. So again, we'll see how he goes. It, it's one of those positions in football, which is quite rare as a Segundo Valante and the fact that we play two makes it kind of difficult to find that sort of position uh, sort of player to play in that position uh, unless you're a big big team which clearly we're not now up top we've got 29 year old Dulai 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 yeah we'll go with Dulai uh, doesn't like big matches unfortunately but he's he's got a good attributes to be an advanced forward it's then going to be Jozanovic, who is a fantastic advance forward for this sort of level of football at 22 years old. Could do with being a little bit quicker, but we are working on that, as you can see. Uh, and then, as I've already gone over, it is Mehik as the new player into the into the squad. 
Uh, and there we go. Look, already there must be three under 21 players playing for the first 11. Oh dear. So we've we've messed up the starting lineup already. <laughs> Let me see who we've got who is uh, under 21 who can play in the starting lineup. Right. Do you know what? Let's let's put uh, let's put let's put a gitch up top. Hopefully that's good enough. Now we've got three hundred twenty-one players. There we go. There we go. Squad registration rules and team match uh, match day rules, guys. Is uh, going through all these different nations. It's it's quite difficult to get used to, and sometimes you make a mistake like that. Right, we're underway. It's Ruchina with the first highlight. It's a good free kick and it's a good save by the goalkeeper as well. Uh, but already Vajadan on the attack early on. Only four minutes on the clock. It's going to be a gitch to take the resultant corner. Looking for one of those big centre-halves and he has. He's found Dizdarovic straight away. Uh, and within four minutes of our career here in Croatia, uh, we've taken a fantastic lead from, from a set-piece routine, which is... Uh, it's quite a feature of our, our gameplay. We're, we're strong from corners and set pieces. We like big, powerful centre-halves. And Dizdarovic, with his massive jump and reach, uh, as we've already shown, 18 and 12 heading at 6'6", six six is it definitely fills that, that uh, bracket of centre-half that we like to have here in our clubs. And hopefully we can do it again. It's a gitch again with a corner. Again towards Des Darovic, but unfortunately this time the ball has gone over the bar. We're still piling the pressure on with these set pieces. It's a deep one this time towards Des Darovic again, and he's hit the post this time. He is looking dangerous from these corners. It's Orient on the attack this time, though. It's Buzov in towards Hoffman. Hoffman has equalised. That's, uh, that's absolutely shocking goal to keep in there from, from Dominic. Really should have been keeping that out. Let's just see. We should win the header, first of all, but... Dominic in goal is uh, he's made an absolute meal of that. Why why did he just not stand there and catch the ball? Uh, and we we've they've drawn level with us. Milanovic looking to get back back into it though. It's Vucina feeding it inside to Nova Selec. Comes back to, to Vinko. <laughs> We're going to call him Vinko. Uh, Vucina with the ball over the top towards Dulai. He's in behind. Dulai squares it for Agic and Blendy Agic gets his first goal of the season. Great play there by Dulai to. To find the pass to a gitch for for a tap in, I, I do wonder whether it was actually a shot by Dulai though, and it's uh, it's just gone horribly wide and into the path of uh, a gitch. But it's it's good play, really. It, I think that was a shot. I think that was a shot, and uh, a gitch is just in the right place at the right time. And we've restored our lead, which is great. We are dominating the game as well. And at half time, just confirmation there, guys, that we are absolutely dominating the game. We've we're creating all the chances. That we've had all of the ball, all of the passes and stuff like that. We're playing particularly well. It's disappointing to concede uh, that that goal, though. Uh, Dominic, really, he's got to hold his hands up to that. But we're still, these set pieces towards the back post again and Dizderovic. But unfortunately, this one has gone over the bar again. If, if only his heading was slightly better, I think he could score 20 goals this season from these corners. It's towards him again. And do you know what? We'll have to keep an eye on how many goals does uh, does Derevic does score this season because I think he can at least get 10. At least 10. He should be aiming for more. If only, if his, like you say, if his heading was slightly better, then we could be looking at a 20-goal season for a centre-half. Uh, as Ley wins that header, finds Dulai. Milanovic in to Vrucina, looking for the ball over the top, but uh, it's, it's a poor ball, really. And Patrick cuts it out, finds Tomic into Maric. Maric advancing down the left-hand side. He's got some good pace about him. He's going to get the ball. The cross is blocked. And we helped it clear. Lay looking long. Uh, we've given the ball straight back to them again, though. Jozanovic has just fallen over. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Jozanovic just took an elbow to the face. <laughs> okay, okay. I've never seen that before. Um... So Orient now down to 10 men, but this is where they scored from last time, from one of those deep free kicks, and they've, they've done well to get the ball back in again. Uh, and they've equalised again. They have equalised again. The 10 men of Orient have, uh, have pulled a level. We seem to be struggling defending these free kicks, really. Um, we do get that one headed clear, but there's nobody to pick up the second ball, and Buzov is in just in acres of space, and it's similar to our second goal. 
where the man at the back post has just nodded it, uh, tapped it in. But Nikic looking for Dizderovic again. And oh my God, he's there again. Amal Dizderovic with his second goal of the game. And we're already a fifth of the way through to that 10 of the season, that the target that I'm giving him. Uh, he's got two in his first game, which is fantastic. Uh, and we've taken the lead yet again, which which is good. Uh, it's a little bit discouraging, the fact that we conceded two goals, though, uh, going into this season. Uh, as we look to pile the pressure on Vicina, Milanovic, ball over the top towards Dulai. Can he square it for a teammate? He comes back instead. Now he squares it to Jozanovic, but it's uh, it's it's gone over the bar. Deflected over the bar, but this is where we're dangerous. We're dangerous. Can Dizderovic get his hat-trick? Number 14 there on the edge of the six-yard boxes towards him. And it's saved by the keeper. The keeper denies Dizderovic his hat-trick. He's going to get another chance, though. This one's going to go deep, I think. Towards the back post. Indeed, it does. Dizderovic is there again. Oh, he was, he was unmarked. Unmarked. He should have hit the target. But, guys, one thing you have to remember about Vajadin is, yes, we're in the, the second tier in Croatia. Uh, but it was just to get us into the door in Croatia. I'd rather be playing football in a second-tier squad than, than sitting here just clicking continue for a season, waiting for a job to come available. Uh, as Agic nips in, pinches that one back, and he clears it long. Jozanovic is going to get onto it. Can he finish? He's, oh, the defender managed to get back to him, and it's looped up into the arms of the goalkeeper. So, yeah, I'd, I'd rather be playing football, despite it being in the second tier. Uh, the, Obviously, we're going to look for a job in the first tier if one becomes available to get ourselves up there. It, from my point of view, it's so so boring sitting here for a season, just just click and continue. Uh, like you know, at least we're playing football, we're winning games, we're it's still building our reputation up, particularly in Croatia. If, if the big teams in Croatia see that we're doing well here at Vajadin, then it, it's going to help us out going forward. And who knows, maybe we could take Vajadin to the title in in the the first tier. We'll see. Uh, as Dominic collects this ball, we're into the final 10 minutes now. Rolls it out to Katelanak. I think I've said that right. Nova Select coming forward into lay. Ball forward towards a Gitch, but it's headed clear. Katelanak picks it up again, gets it into a Gitch. This is the chance for four. It's a great finish by Blendy a Gitch. He gets his second goal of the game as well. Does the young man who with bags of potential. I'm hoping some of these youngsters at this, this team... Uh, can fulfil this potential, but he does well. Puts the pressure on the defender, forces the error out of the defender there. The defender could have really left that go. Controls that well, and it's a great finish past the goalkeeper, though, for 4-2. Uh, and exactly what we wanted in our first game of charge. It has been a dominant performance. Jozanovic uh, has not had the best of games up top, though, uh, but I'm not too concerned. We've, we've scored four. Nova Select has not had the best of games either. We've also got some very tired players already in the season. Uh, but fantastic, fantastic victory for us. And that's exactly the way that we want it to start here in Croatia. And confirmation then, guys, of, of the start of the season. We're, we're in second place. It's, it's been one game. Ignore the league table for now. It makes no difference whatsoever. But second place is a pretty good start to the season. Now, we're only going to do one game today. Uh, we're only going to do one game today. I'm conscious of the length of the episode, guys. Uh, so we're going to come back. There's 36 games in the season. So we'll come back around 12 in which is going to be somewhere around here. Obviously, we'll see how we do and see if we're still at Vajadin, of course. Um, we'll, we'll, if we are, we'll knock a couple of games off in this sort of area here. But guys, thank you very much for tuning in, as always, and welcome to Croatia. Hopefully, we have a, a good time here like we have in the previous 15 nations. Once we've completed Croatia, we're officially halfway through our challenge, halfway through. Uh, but guys, yeah, thank you. Please remember to hit that thumbs up button for me and the subscribe button as well. It does help me out massively. Leave me any comments as well. You know, guys, I appreciate all of them. And thank you very much uh, from sincerely. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'll see you all next time. So cheers, guys.